So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. And tonight is the 17th of February, 2022. The topic for this evening is the energy body. So um, before I start talking about the energy body, I just want to mention that Tonight, I'm going to talk about the energy body, the mainly the, the our, our chakra system. So we have seven major energy centers within our body. So I'm going to talk about that from the point of view of being a human and um, how, how to move through it, how to balance our chakras. And next week, I'll be talking about the energy body again, but from a very different point of view, from the cosmic point of view. So it's like today, today, this episode, I'm going to talk about it from the human point of view. So really from the root chakra up. And next week, I'm going to talk about it from the cosmic, um, meaning the, the universal understanding of why we have these seven chakras really from the top down then. So, so that we can really understand what, why we have this energy body and what this energy body actually, um, how it interweaves our reality and, and, and influence how we experience our reality. So, Without further ado, let me just start talking about the our seven energy centers. So I have talked about our seven energy centers before. And this time I'm um, really focusing on one thing, which is how to balance our energy centers. We um, actually let me just bring up the our seven energy centers so we have seven energy centers from so this week I'm going to talk about from the human point of view so so from the root up then is we have the root chakra which is the first chakra and then sacro is the second one and then solar plexus the third one and then the fourth one which is kind of the the the, the middle and then throat, third eye, and crown chakra. From a human point of view, um, especially at this time when we are going from the third dimension to the next, we are sh shifting. So what is it that we can do that we needed to do in order to make that shift. Because we are all living our lives, like actually all our lives is actually to make that shift, whether we make that shift this time around or um, um, next time around, which would be however long it takes for, for the soul to get through um, to understand and work through and release all the blockages in our energy system. That's the work that we are here to do on earth. So let's just talk about um, looking at the seven chakras holistically. So holistically, we have seven chakras the crown chakra is actually, um, I'm not going to talk much about it because the, the seventh is really the combination of everything that all the, the, um, the work that we've put in through the other six chakras. So the seventh is kind of the the sum of all the other six. And so if you just look at the other six, then there's really three upper chakras and then three lower chakras. So 
you can think of the three lower chakras as um, really energy going from our, we're taking energy from the earth. So the root chakra is really our connection to earth. So being grounded, being rooted, and also when we, when we first come into this earth, we came through the, the, the birth canal, which is where our root chakra. So, so that's where we came out. And that's our connection to this earth. So that's the root, root chakra. And the root chakra is all about survival. It's about um, our animal nature. I, I have to say that it's about our animal nature. As a human being, we think of ourselves as being better than a dog or better than a cat. However, if you just look at our body, if you only look at that, then our body is no different from a, any other animal's body. Is that is a vessel. So that's what I mean by our animal nature. So what are the the, the most primal of primal nature? As an animal, we need three things. Those three things is we need food. We need to sleep and we need to have sex sex so sex is really to procreate so that whatever it is that we um let's say it's our creation process where we can perpetuate the species and also whatever it is that we um don't get done within our lifetime, whatever issues we cannot resolve, those whatever um, difficulties that we find in our lives, we kind of pass that on to the next generation so that they, a new set of um, eyes, a new set of hands, and uh, a new beginning can come and take a look at the issues that tripped us up and have a different way of approaching it. So that is really how we as a human race evolve. So three, those three things that are so common is really related to the root chakra. So food, or I should say, being able to energize ourselves, to keep ourselves, to fuel ourselves and to um, survive. That is, that's what food represents for us. And then procreation, which is survival, a way of survival, but survival of the species, not just survival of ourselves in particular. And then sleep. Sleep is something that is um is there's so much that i can talk about sleep but we need sleep even though sleep puts us in a very vulnerable position because when we when we are sleeping we can't um defend ourselves so but we need sleep Sleep is when we process, when our mind process and we regenerate our body. So those are the three things that is that any living being or any animal, I should say, those are the three things that would be um, part of the root chakra. So when we talk about balancing the root chakra, then you have to look at what kind of experiences that we have in our lifetime that is going to create a blockage. So you don't really need um, someone else who can see energy to tell you. You can actually know how 
vibrant or how um, balanced your own root chakra is by looking at asking yourself some questions is, do you have any uh, survival conversations? Do you have any um, judgment around sex? Because sex is a part of who you are. If you have any conversations, meaning any judgment, any um, particular story that, you know, it has to be a certain way, then those would be reasons or ways that you can block your own root chakra. Those would be the, the kind of thinking that is going to block you. And then it's anything to do with survival. So any kind of survival insecurity, if you, for example, um, you don't know how, where money is going to come from for next month, next year. So those kind of thinking, and it could be any fear. So fear and danger are two different things. Danger, I would think of danger as, you know, if you are faced with a, you know, uh, um, a tiger, let's say, in the wild, then that's danger. That's definitely a dang dangerous situation. Fear is really something in your mind. You create a scenario in your mind to block yourself, to create certain experience for yourself. So that would be like, if you have that kind of thinking, if that kind of thinking, then you know that you need to do some work on your root chakra to let go of those kind of thinking. So that's really what the, the root chakra is about and how to balance it. The best way to, to balance it is really to differentiate fear from danger. Fear is a do it to ourselves project. Whereas danger is really you're out there encountering something that is an immediate threat to your body. So that is one way of doing it. Um, and the, it's so whenever we face our own fear, whenever we do anything to look at our own fear, and you can think of fear as a low vibration version of love. So we think of love, however, if our vibration is not high enough, then there is always this fear about, oh, um, yes, I love myself, but so whatever comes after the but is fear that you created in your own mind. And it's a low vibration energy. And how do you, what do you do in order to shift your own thinking so that you don't indulge in these low vibration thinking? And I'll be sharing more about how to balance the, these three, the root, the sacral and the solar plexus more to, to come. So now I'm just going to talk about the next one up, which is the sacral, the sacral, the second chakra. So root chakra is about survival and sexuality. Um, any, any trauma, any insecurity about our survival and our sexuality, anything that... Um, any conversation or judgment that we have against our own animalistic nature that will create a blockage to our root chakra. Sacral chakra is different. Sacral chakra is more about our relationship to ourselves. So how you your relationship with yourself really is... Um, 
will be able to tell you about the, the health of your second chakra, your sacral chakra. So if you ask yourself this question, how do you feel about yourself? Do you absolutely enjoy who you are in this moment? Do you love yourself? Do you, what do you think about yourself? And if you have any negative, if the answer comes back as being negative, um, whether it is, oh, I don't think I'm good enough, I don't like my body. I, you know, um, I easily get jealous because I don't have very good self-esteem. So all those, those things is really evidence that there is an imbalance in your sacral chakra because your relationship to yourself, to who you are in this moment is not in balance because the balance is... You love yourself, no matter who you are, where you're at. You may not be perfect, but that's absolutely perfect because no one is perfect. Being a human is not about being perfect. And when you really understand that and get to the point where you love yourself, with all your imperfections, you still love yourself and accept yourself where you're at and not try to create a false sense of self, then you know that your sacral chakra would be balanced. But in the meantime, if you have any conversations about um, judgment towards yourself, um, or it could be that you have sustained any emotional trauma, or if you have any co internal conversations that I'm not good enough, I can't do this, all those things is evidence of an imbalanced sacral chakra. So how do we balance it? It's really to understand what being a human being is. It's not about being perfect. It's about doing our best at every moment. And even doing our best at every moment, we'll, we may fall short. But to recognize that we've done our best in this moment and, and we fall short, so that's okay. We forgive ourselves. We accept where we are without... Um, without losing sight that, yes, we accept where we are, our, all our imperfections, but that does not mean that we cannot aim to be better next time. So it's about accepting where we are and also doing our best. So that's one way of balancing our sacral chakra. And then the third one is, or further up, is our solar plexus. So if the root chakra is about our animalistic nature and accepting that, and the sacral is about balancing our relationship with ourselves, then the third chakra is about balancing our relationship with others and it's also about self-awareness as well but awareness of ourselves in relationship to other people so what may make us imbalanced what are some of the possible blockage that you the questions to ask yourself is do you have any social anxiety are you jealous or maybe it's the opposite is, do you always feel that you need to be better than someone else? So pride, looking at that. And also, 
desire. Um, I would say, do you want to be worship or worship someone else? And some other questions to ask yourself is, do you feel like you're a victim? Or do you often act in a way that makes sure that you won't be the victim? So you go on to the other, the opposite end of the, the spectrum is you actually become the victimizer because in your mind, that's the only way that you will not be the victim. So these are all clues to how balanced or not your solar plexus may be because a balanced so, so, uh, solar plexus is when you know who you are, you fully accept yourself and you don't need to be any one else or anything else. You simply um, is congruent about who you are and you are comfortable about who you are and you're not afraid to show that and you're not afraid to be who you are no matter what other people may think no matter what other who how other people are being that you are still grounded in who you are so being authentic those are really um, signs that you have a balanced solar plexus. So how do we balance our own solar plexus? If we have these things, then I would suggest that the, the, the way to do it is really work from the ground up. Meaning that we accept our animal nature and have no qualms about our animalistic nature. There's no shame in needing to have sex. There's no shame in sex, no shame in procreation, no shame in the taking care of our bodily needs and really taking care of ourselves. If we want to eat, then really um, honor that. And also pay attention to when we eat, what actually feeds us, what our body actually needs, instead of eating to feed our emotions. Let's say, oh, I feel I need to have a cheesecake because, well, I don't have a Valentine's Day uh, date. So I'm gonna buy myself a cheesecake and eat that instead. So things like that, that we, we need something sweet because, well, things are not going so well. So when we start to honor our animalistic parts of ourselves, when we actually accept our body's needs, not that we will give in to our body's needs, but to get to the point where we don't judge what our body needs. Our body sometimes may need um, a slap of stick does that mean that I have to go out and get a, a slab of stick and really cook it for myself and eat it? Maybe. If when you check within, that is actually what your body needs right now, then I would highly suggest that you go and take care of what your body needs. However, if you check in and it's not really that I want a slab of stick, it is just that um, 
that's what the other people around me are doing. So I want to fit in. And in order to fit in, then I have to get to this, into this, you know, also eating this similar food from others to be accepted. So you have to ask yourself this, the question and truly listen to what answer comes back. And then the next thing to balance is to, once we've accepted our animalistic nature and have no judgment against that, also know that other people are similar as well. So yes, you, you don't judge other people when they have when they are trying to satisfy their own animalistic nature. That's them. So have no judgment about how other people be. And then from the, the, the sacral is your, once you've accepted your own animalistic nature, then it is about accepting who you are in this moment. So it really boils down to getting to know who you are, know yourself, not who other people wants you to be, not who your parents want you to be, um, not who your friends want you to be, but really take the time to ask yourself what is real for you? What really brings you joy? So this is a question that, or this is something that only you can do. Don't listen to what other people say. Don't listen to what other people want of you. is to really get to the point. Um, actually, I'm trying to. Thank you. Yes. OK, so what this is, is know yourself, know who you are. And this is something that, um, from my own experience, it, it took a, it was a long journey. So when you, the journey to know yourself has many facets. You think you know yourself, but you don't. Or I, okay, let me put it this way. I thought I knew myself. For the longest time, I thought I knew myself but I actually didn't because when, when you're not very aware or you don't pay enough attention, then you see yourself as who your egoic self wants you to see yourself. But that is not really who we truly are. when we can see ourselves, not just from our point of view, but also from other people's point of view, because um, when we see ourselves from our own point of view, we only see a fraction of it. When you see it from someone else's point of view, when you really listen to other people giving you their opinion, of you, it may be very uncomfortable for you to listen to it. But when you get good at listening to it, not that 
everything other people say is going to be true. But you have to listen to it because if you only see yourself through your own eyes, you can't get the full picture of who you are. But when you are curious and you start to ask other people and they would give their opinion. So it is really from their point of view, how they see you. And if you ask enough person, then you will start to get a better picture of who you truly are, because who you truly are is someone other than who you think you are. So know yourself is, it takes a long time and it may be a lifelong journey to get to know yourself. But you cannot do any of the other balancing until you get curious about who you are when you start to ask yourself this question. Not from knowing, because if you ask, if you say, oh, I know who I am, if you already know, then you don't know because you already stopped listening. You already have your own um, version of it and there's no, and you can't get any more from this. So the first requirement to know yourself is really to know that you don't know yourself, to come from that point of view that, well, I don't really know myself. I know how I was brought up and I know how I reacted from my own upbringing. But who am I really beyond all of my experience? That's something that takes a lifetime or maybe many lifetimes to explore. However, we start that in this moment by simply being open to get to know ourselves better. And then once you know yourself better, then you can start to do the next part of the job. Next part of the job is to balance. So when you start to know yourself, you will start to see your own faults and you would start to, um, I can give an example of my own experience of that is, you know, from, for the longest time, I always thought my mom is horrible person picking on me. And it is when I really start to do the work of getting to know who I am and trying to see from her point of view how she, how my action, what I do impacted her, that I can actually see another version of myself. And then I start to see the, why our relationship is the way it is. And So part of when you start to know yourself, you would see all your own faults, the things that you have done that you could have done better. It's all hindsight though. It's all hindsight. You, however, it's something that needed to be done because if you don't see all of that, if you don't get to know yourself, then you will never be able to start doing all this work. For example, right now, we, um, we talked about our situation. Collectively, we are starting to get to know who we are. Collectively, because what we are doing is we have to start not just seeing the world through our own eyes, but to see the world through other people's eyes as well. 
because everyone is simply another part of me. So when we start to get curious about why other people think differently from us, so when we start to get to know humanity, not just from my point of view, but from everyone else's point of view, we'll start to, as a collective, start to piece together why reality is the way it is. And we can, once we start to listen to each other, then we can get to the point where we start to see where it is that we could have done better and then start to do better, start to make changes to do better. So that is what the, however, without knowing who we truly are, how we actually, every thought and every word we say and every act that we do and everything that we refrain from doing has an impact when we start to get to know ourselves. And then we look at the full picture and then we start to um, find the best way to move forward, to get, to accept who we are in this moment. Imperfect, everyone, there's no one right now that is absolutely perfect, because if, if we are perfect, there's no need to be here. So everyone that's here right now have some imperfection. And that's why we are here, is to explore ourselves through those imperfections, how we grow from those imperfections is the, the beauty of this journey. So when we can start to see that, we don't look at our imperfections as failure. We look at our imperfections as simply a starting point. We find something that is not working in our life, that we, we find an imperfection in our reality. How do we get past that? How do we shift our own thinking, start to try something else? So all of the, those things, what we can come up with, what we experiment with, that's part of the journey, part of the journey. And when we get to the point where we know that everything that we have experienced is our own creation. When I actually got to know that the, my relationship with my mom is my creation. So I have created this relationship with my mother. That is something that I have to come to grips with and start to look at why did I create this relationship with my mom? Because the relationship that I actually want to have with my mom is very different from the actual relationship. And, and because I didn't know who, who I was, that I always think that it was someone else's fault that things are not the, is not right in my world. And when I start to go down that, that path of getting to know who I truly am, not just from my own point of view, but from my mother's point of view, from all my friends' point of view, all of those, then I can start to understand where are things that I could have improved and what it is that I cannot improve or for whatever reasons, I cannot improve fast enough is to accept 
in those imperfections in the moment. But know, also know that if I can create this relationship, then I can recreate this relationship to whatever it is that I want, which is the work of being in the third dimension. And when we get good at it, when we get to the point where we recognize that we truly create our own experiences and when we can accept that responsibility and have no sidestepping that, oh, I'm, I'm victim of circumstances, um, all of those or any of those conversations when we truly know that every experience we have, we created it. The bad ones as well as the good ones, we created it. We don't consciously create it, but we unconsciously create it. That we are actually the creator of our, all of our own experiences. And we get to that level of taking responsibility for our own creation. Then we actually get to the part where we can finally accept who we are, accept all of our imperfection, and get into the next chakra, which is our heart. Our heart is really the, um, how should I put it? It is, it is first chakra that we experience our spiritual nature, which is completely different from our animalistic nature. So that's why it's not easy to get to the heart chakra. It's not, not easy because of the unfinished work that we have about accepting our own animalistic nature and working through the imperfection or perceived imperfection. When we have done enough work and when we get to the part where we feel comfortable that we are actually the creator of our own experiences, or the good things or the bad things, we are the one that have created it. And when we can get to that part and truly accept all of our own creations, and then we get to our heart chakra, or I should say that we, our heart chakra can full, be fully open because we have done those work. Our heart chakra is actually always our own nature, our own spiritual nature is joy, light, love. That's all that our heart knows. And when the animalistic part of us shoots up these energies, these unprocessed energies that are mostly negative, then our heart cannot process these because our heart is really the spiritual part of us. So it cannot process all these negativity. So we experience it as being our heart closed off, that there are blockage in our hearts. It's not our heart that's blocked. It's really our root chakra or our sacral or our solar plexus that are blocked. And we have unprocessed energy. So when our heart which is joy like love, all of a sudden have these negative energy thrown at it, it will, it does not compute. 
So we feel it like as from a humanistic point of view, we feel it as being closed off. We can't access, uh, um, we can't comprehend from a human point of view what our spirit is. And there is this disconnect and we feel it as there's a blockage in our heart, but there's no blockage in our heart. Our heart is pure spirit. It's always open. It is just that we have not processed and come to terms with our animalistic nature, which is the first three chakras, the, the, the part of us that grounds us to our body. It grounds us to the part of us that um, is focused in the, the is focused in the physical, and when we have done enough of those work, then we would be able to start to experience our heart as being open. So our heart is really when we start to feel our heart, we start to be able to get in touch with the compassion within us. We can start to grasp what unity, what oneness means. And then our throat chakra is really our ability to be authentic because our throat chakra is we speaking our truth to the world. We are who we are. Our vibration is our word. So when we actually speak our truth, then whatever we speak becomes reality. And then from our third eye, it's when we get to fully get to know our third eye, we get to know who we truly are. Because we will be able to not just see ourselves as this body, but we see ourselves as being everything. So if we are everyone else, if we are everything and all that is, we we'll be able to sense probability, possibilities. We'll be able to see into the future because the future has, the, is, is really about probability and possibility. And when we are everything, when we know ourselves as being everyone, and everything, then all of our, all those things start to open up to us as a consciousness. It takes a long time to get to that part. And, but I just want to, to throw it out there that when we want these abilities to see into the future, to be able to create instantaneously, be able to manifest everything that we want, all of those things is really natural to us as a spirit. But we are here as a body. So we need to work through all of the imbalance in our 
first three chakras, when we have worked through all of those and start to connect to who we truly are as joy, light, love, as the creator, as all there is and all that is, then whatever it is that we want to manifest, we just have to speak it, ask for it, and it is done. So that really is from a human point of view, how to move through and balance all of our chakras. And um, that's all that I want to talk about this evening. Mm -hmm.